Sponsored by Win-Win Technologies. Introducing the Orion F16EX POTAS. Also available as separate joystick and throttle sets. Or the stick and throttle grip components. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's the 24th of January and a lovely big juicy free mod has entered the DCS market yet again. This is codename Flankers SU30 mod. It's very comprehensive, very big, very complex. There's lots to talk about and we've got very little time so we're just going to blast through as quickly as we can. We're going to talk about installation, setup, controls, weapons, startup, cockpit, air-to-air -air operation, air-to-ground operation, air-to-air -air refueling, multiplayer multi-crew, and SFM EFM if we get time. So start installation. In the video description you are watching, I will give you a link to this. It is the DCS SU30 mod Discord channel. You're going to come in here. There will be a link in here to download the mod. It's not available yet because we've got the testing version and it's not public yet, but hopefully by the time you're watching this video, it should be public. Once you've downloaded the folder, you'll need to put it in your saved games area. For me, that is C drive, users, me, save games, DCS open beta, mods, aircraft, and place it in there. At this point, you would usually go and play the game, but we're not ready for that because this is a special mod. So instead, we're going into this folder here. We're going to open config.lua. This is something you do have to do. You cannot open it in Notepad. The minimum specification to open it up in is Notepad++. It's a free app, so go and download that, and then just drag it in there. And here's where we set up what we're going to do with the mod. So there are four variants of the SU-30 included in this mod. The SM, that is the modernized Russian export variant. The MKI, the Indian variant. The MKA, the Algerian variant. And the MKM, the Malaysian variant. Attached to each of those four variants is a set of arguments that you'll want to set up. You've got the name here. Well, you can leave that. You've got the role here. The role can either be air-to-air -air operation or air-to-ground operation. You decide which of the four you want to do air-to-air -air and air-to-ground in. Note, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground are mutually exclusive. You cannot do both. So for instance, if I want to fly the MKI in air-to-ground, I cannot fly it in air-to-air -air unless I come here, change that, and restart the game. So make sure you plan this out before you go and do anything. That's how we did it. So the way I've got it set up is I'm going to use the Indian variant for the air to ground because I've got that heffing great BrahMOS missile I want to fire and the rest I'll go air to air. Next argument is EFM fast. These models all come with two types of flight model. An SFM, a standard flight model, a very, very simplified, not particularly realistic flight model that most of the, almost all of the mods come with. It's just a standard way of doing it. Or an EFM, an external flight model. You can Enable the EFM if you want here. Otherwise, by default, it's the SFM. Note, the external flight model is, how would we explain, uh, probably a work in progress. Things like you can't go supersonic with it and stuff like that because they've tailored it to be able to do fancy moves for people to go and do dogfight videos with and stuff like that. So I would leave it on SFM until you've uh, had a play with SFM. And then if you want to go and mess with EFM, we'll probably show that later if we get time. Next, cockpit mod. Attached to each one of these aircraft, which cockpit type do you want to show? An SSM variant, an ASM variant, or the original flanker SU-33, which this aircraft is, of course, built on in-game. If you put nothing in the argument there, then it just defaults which one is most suitable to that, or you can force a certain cockpit on it, and of course, we'll be looking at the cockpits. Next, UFC type, very similar. Not the whole cockpit, but just the UFC, the upfront controller. Do you want an SM or do you want an MK? I would suggest MK because it's in English. SM is, of course, Russian. And finally, is it FC3, true or false? FC3 means flame and cliffs, meaning that if you have it as true, you cannot fly as multi-crew to humans. If you have it as false, then you can fly multi-crew, which we'll go and try later on. So I've got my MKM set up as my multi-crew, FC3 false. I've got my MKI set up as air to ground and the other two set up as standard air to air. So that's that bit out the way. As long as you set that up now, you'll probably need to uh, never change that again. So let's get out of there. Next, let's start the game and check that it's installed correctly. So if it's picked up correctly, you'll see SU30 here and uh, ping, we have an SU30. Next, controls. So options here. 
controls, we have four aircraft to set up, assuming you want to fly them all. If you just want to fly the MKI, just set that one up, but you will need to otherwise set all four of them up. Now, the best way I can explain this is that 90 to 95% of the controls in these aircraft, of which all four are the same, are the same controls as used by the SU-33 and the SU-25T. Now, because you need the SU-33 to make this mod work, and the SU-25T is free and you have it by standard, I already know that you've got those controls set up. So you guys can go and figure out all the SU-33 and the SU-25T controls that you need yourselves. If you can't work that out for some reason, I've got videos showing you how to set those controls up. But there are some specific controls you'll need just for this mod. So, for instance, axis controls for the stick, left and right, forwards and backwards, you'll need FCS, pitch axe and roll axe. Uh, otherwise everything there is standard. Also, countermeasures I noticed is different. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, ECM control panel. Here, these are actually the countermeasures. You can have a control for choosing the program of countermeasures, dispensers, next and previous. And to start and stop the program dispensing, you can add a control in there. Otherwise, like I said, everything is the same as the SU-33 and the SU-25. Uh, Tango in-game sensors here this one is a bit of a mix of both but otherwise there's nothing unique to this mod it's all the same so that is our controls okay next let's go and do some more setup so let's build a quick mission mission editor right here's one i made earlier it's already got in it an algeria a malaysia uh, export russian and we're just going to put the i version in so add aircraft group there click there I would suggest making it just combine joint forces, red or blue, which is going to be easier. Go down here, find SU-30, uh, MKI is the one I'm missing. Note, it will specify here whether you've chosen the air-to-air -air or the air-to-ground. So let's get him in there. I'm going to make him a client so we can fly it. I'm going to put him on the ground, hot, rotating him around there. Next, the weapons. So... Let's start with Algeria. How to pylons, or stations. Just the Mark I Archer we've got there. Same as the old flanker and the uh, ECM pods on the wing tips. Next pylon in, Archer again. Next one in, a selection of missiles. These are all legacy missiles uh, concurrent with the SU-33. You've got an extended range, uh, radar extended range optical, medium range radar, medium range optical, and Archer and Adder, uh, legacy versions, and all core game stuff there, nothing new. Edge ground munitions, we do have some special stuff for the mod. We've got uh, a couple of kedges here, a laser guided variant, and a T guided variant. I'm not sure what the E is, but it just works the same as the T variant, and we can go and try some of this out later. We've got a KH-33A, I think that's an anti-ship. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an anti-ship. We've got uh, another kedge here, there's, there's just the basic T variant. These are kind of like Mavericks, HM-65 is a bit bigger. And we'll show you working all of these later on. We've got a KH-31, the old style, 80s Russian um, missile. We've got a uh, anti-ship and a uh, anti-radiation variant. <clears throat> we've got a KH-59 and we've got a KH-59 MK. These are uh, kind of like medium range cruise uh, ground hugging missiles. Again, we'll show them off later on how to use them. Bombs. Uh, as far as I'm aware, all of those are legacy bombs available in the SU-25T and or the SU-33 flanker, so you don't need me to go over them now. You can just watch those videos if you want to know more about them. Same with rockets. You've got some legacy rockets as per the flanker, as per the uh, Frogfoot. Next pile on in, it's going to be the same stuff. We've got these legacy core game missiles, and we've got the same uh, edge ground as we saw before, uh, with an added cab 1500 uh, laser guided PR. I'm not sure what that is, but as far as I'm aware, it's just going to be the same in use as the 1500 laser. Otherwise, that's all legacy core game stuff. Nothing is specific to the mod there. And we go on in that fashion. Um, we just have slight reductions. Oh, yeah, I should say uh, we've got pods here. Now, because this is an air to air variant, you can't actually use these pods. You'd need to bring out the air to ground variant if you actually wanted to use these pods. We've Damocles here, which is going to be our targeting pod. We've also got Neelint, a radar collection on that cell there. Again, you can't actually use it unless you get the air to ground variant. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to show. Uh, obviously, to use the uh, ground weapons, apart from things like free fall bombs, anything guided, anything like that, air to ground pods, uh, you need to have the air to ground variant. To use the uh, air to air weapons, 
uh, these various missiles here, stuff like that, you're going to need air to air variant and have a fire control radar, obviously. Uh, standard mod stuff, basically. Next, we've got the MKM Malaysia, and that's just the same as the Algeria. Otherwise, I should say they do have skins that come with them. As you can see, it's pretty sexy skins, and it is a good high-quality mod mesh as well, um, animation. So that's all good. Next, let's go to the modernized export from Russia. So outer pylons, uh, just the same as we saw before, just the old 1984 Archer. Uh, legacy missile. But when we get to Pylons 10 inwards, we get some interesting things. So R27 is an Alamo, as you'll know, and E is extended range variant. Uh, in game, the core game, we get two seeker heads. We get the Tango, which is an electrical optical, we're heat seeking, and an R, which is a semi active radar guided um, the Fox 1 type radar. Now we get two new variants, two new seeker heads for the Alamos Papa and an Alpha. Alpha is just an active, the Fox 3 converts the Alamo, as we know, into a Fox 3. So like a Amram on steroids, if you will, uh, which is interesting. Now, some of these didn't actually make it to production, we know. I'm not sure which ones were, but some of these were test missiles only. Papa, here, this is an interesting missile. It's an Alamo converted to be a radar emission guided. So it's a passive. It's, it's like a SEAD missile, an anti-radiation missile, but for shooting fighters down. How cool is that, right? That's that. Uh, otherwise, legacy, 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 legacy. We've got the um, R-77-1. Uh, this is a game changer for Russia. It's like a kind of small AMRAM, but it's the Dash-1, the modern variant, competitive with NATO range and stuff like that. And of course, the R-77M, long-range R-77 variant. These are all specific to the mod. Air to ground, lots of stuff. A couple of kedges, a couple of kedges, 31s we've been through with slightly different warheads. Um, Kedge 35, anti-ship. These are new ones. I uh, haven't actually tried them out yet, so I'm not sure what they are. It uh, looks like anti-shipping is a harpoon to me, but let me know what you think. And that, another Kedge, another 31, got a Grom, Kedge 36, got the 59s again, and 59 Mark II, which again I haven't tried out yet. Bombs, all Legacy Core stuff there, I believe. Rockets, Legacy Core stuff. And we're going to go in pretty much the same vein as that from then on, with the same or reduced variants as we go. We're going to have the Damocles pod. And we're going to have the Elint pod as well. And that is the SM. So that's a pretty awesome variety of weapons that we can have there. Next, let's look at India. We've got, again, 1984 archers. Uh, ah, now here we go. These are some Indian missiles with the Astra Mark 1. I mean, roughly put, I would say it's the equivalent of an Indian AMRAM. Um, we've also got the smaller I Derby ER. Um, it looks like a Sidewinder or something. Actually, a Fox 3 Amram type of missile. Interesting missile there. Um, you're going to use it the same as that. Old Archer, uh, Legacy Adder. Um, what else have we got? And we've got a mix there onward of uh, Legacy Russian stuff, core game stuff, and the I Derby and the Astra. This is how the MKI variant of the SU 30 works which is all very cool. If we were to go to air to ground, similar to the SM, but they're going to have some changes as we see going on. Uh, Rudra, uh, that is like a like a harm, anti-radiation weapon. Um, small diameter bombs, we'll go and drop some of those later on, shall we? Uh, legacy rockets, core game rockets. Uh, as we're doing this, uh, the make, main maker of the mod has just come in. It's Neo Shot from number 15. Hello, sir. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, viewers. Great timing because we've just, I've just gone through the installation and all the boring stuff. And now we've been going through the payloads. We've just got to the MKI and we're going through the various payloads. The Rudra M1. How do you pronounce it? Is it Rudra? Rudra? M1? Yes, it's Rudra M1. Rudra, right. M1. Yeah, uh, so we've gone through that. Otherwise, a bunch of kind of legacy. Uh, Missiles in there, let's carry on. Uh, some legacy rockets there. Again, the same type of weapons there. Uh, we've got uh, the same or similar air to ground guided munitions there. Um, bombs, uh, pretty much the same there. Uh, this is going to be the same continuing through the other pylons, uh, including the Damocles targeting pod. And I guess one I want to skip to is the coolest thing about this is that the Indians retrofitted the uh, MKI with a giant anti ship missile, Brahmos. Um, anti-ship missile. I think based on Russian missile, Neo, I can't remember. Yes, so it's based on the P-800 Onyx. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it was a Russian missile. Now they've evolved it and Brahmos, which is actually the company between India and Russia, they, they together made into the Indian version of it, which is the Brahmos, and this one can be launched from the air. And just look at the size of the thing. It's absolutely massive. I mean, compared to, let's say, a harpoon or something, it must be nearly twice the size. So 
it's quite a really impressive piece of kit and nicely modeled as well which is good to see uh, that's it. That's pretty much for the payloads and the variants between the core game and the mods. It was good to go through it all. Uh, everything we're pretty sure is working or very near to working and we'll go and show some stuff off in a minute. Next we're going to show the startup procedure and we're going to do this live because uh, we've just managed to get near one. And of course as ever we're super tight for time. We're going to jump in the MKI. Is the startup procedure going to be the same for all variants Neo? Ah uh, yes. Only the SM has a different UFC so those uh, brightness panel and uh, for SM is different. Right you join us in a cold started MKI. Now we will go through this cockpit and all the switches and cool stuff like that. But first, we're going to show the startup procedure. Neo, take it away, please. For the first thing, you need to turn on the batteries. It's on the right side above the extinguisher, uh, sorry, ex external and internal light panel. Check. Battery one and two. Done. The next thing is the DC voltmeter. Uh, it's on the extreme right. There should be a indicator or, uh, sorry, what do you call it? The analog dial right there. We're going to test that on. We get a voltage and turn it off. The next thing is on the left side, uh, far left, you should see a bunch of uh, circuit breakers, right? So turn them all on. Okay, on, 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 check. To turn on the sensors on the right side, the first thing on the right, rightmost one switch. And what does MFWS stand for? It's for um, MFDs only. Um, Roger. So now you can turn on the MFDs in front of you. Okay, brightness on. And it's on, brightness on, thank you, done. And then the UFC to turn on your HUD. Okay, so UFC, HUD on, check. All right, so next thing is turn on the power on your uh, CMDS system. Okay. So there's an icon with the gear symbol on it. Just increase it, keep increasing it, like tap it like 10, 15 times. Check. All right, so next thing, that's your CMDS on. Uh, you can move it to standby, uh, the CMDS to standby. Check. Then we've got to engine start. So for engine start, uh, there's something called, what do you call start yeah. handle. Right, okay. So pull the start handle, pull. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, now you should see your uh, engine cranking up. You can see in the uh, MFDs. Yep, I can yeah, I certainly hear it going as well. All right. So on the left, you should see a canopy closing button on the left, right uh, below the canopy. Uh, yeah, that. Check. And uh, on the UFC, right side of the UFC, there is a UFC BRT. Mm. This, yeah, 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 the one you're looking right at. Gotcha, yeah. All right, so uh, let's wait for it to clamp up. Idle at 70. Okay, power switches next. RWR on. Radar can stay off because we're supposed to turn it on in the air. OLS RF. Uh, that one's not model. Oh, see this? HMS. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a natural. Roger, IFF, look at that, all modelled, very nice, right, okay, yeah. right, that's those switches done, we can also choose our particular HUD, we've got VV, we've got FXT or VV plus FXT, so VV is the, you know, if you like, realistic HUD for the aircraft, which we've got there, uh, currently in nav mode, and if we want to go FXT, that will convert that instead to just show the FC3 equivalent which is, uh, you know, the workings behind the mod and how it works. Or you can overlay them over the top of each other. And then we have both overlaid, although it's going to get a bit confusing. So we're just going to leave it with VB for now. Next, we're going to go and have a good look at the cockpit. Uh, to do that, I think I'm going to choose, just because I can, the uh, Malaysian variant and the air-to-air -air sub variant. Let's go and try and have a look at that. It is... Not fully interactive, but it is semi-interactive to a high degree, as you'll see now. So we're just going to have a very rough look over from left to right to see what is modelled and what isn't. So we've got this guy here not modelled. This whole panel is modelled. Uh, I'm not going to go and press them off because I'll break the jet. Environmental, not modelled here. This panel here, not modelled here. This panel here, not modelled here. It's just not relevant. This panel here is partially modeled we've got our autopilot modes there that we usually have just through key bindings um, hotas bindings we now have actual buttons to press we've got this is really interesting if we want to use uh, tvc thrust vectoring we can turn this guy on here turn this guy on here watch what we can do now with the nozzles 
I'm just on the SFM flight model, Neo. Will this give me any change in how my aircraft actually flies with the thrust vectoring turned on? Uh, so yes, it will give you a difference. So we uh, normally the, with the SFM, the aircraft has puts too much AOA. So we had a pitch dampener imp uh, implemented on this. So to, in case to override that pitch dampener, we have included the uh, thrust vectoring nozzles. Along with EFM, which comes in the future, those will be mod modeled particularly for the thrust vectoring. But for now, just to disable the pitch, uh, sorry, pitch dampener, we use the PVC nozzles. And yeah, people love the functionality of PVC nozzles. Roger, nozzle steering switch active, got some lighting active, non active there. We've got a radio header here, and I'm not going to go into radios today because it's going to be a bit too much, but we've got a uh, radio header with everything working here, and we can go and change our frequencies and channels, um, but you can go and uh, have a look at that yourselves if you want. Uh, note we've got radio one and radio two. Here we have a weapons armament panel, not implemented at the moment. We do have a switch here, but it's not doing anything at the moment, just bear in mind that. Next, we've got... This is again uh, the panel to add some coordinates to your weapons and other systems, but uh, we do not know what's inside any of those pages. We tried okay. looking for online, but uh, we couldn't find anything, so it's just for sure. Roger. Parachute deploy there, and the parachute release there that you can smack. Obviously, the canopy opening we saw earlier there. We're moving to that side of the HOTAS. Gear up and down. Uh, engine mode combat, not modelled. Uh, is that something you're planning to put in? Engine mode combat? Ah, uh, yes, we are planning to move it. That's again with the EFM. Uh, gear indication status, more indicator lights here. Mast arm on and off does work, so make sure you do that. We've got a angle of attack meter here and a accelerometer here. Not modeled. Not modeled here. MFDs, we have three of them. And let's operate just on this guy here. Uh, main menus if you like are at the top so we can have this page this page TSD RWR MFWS and MASD so VSD is basically flight instruments we've got our ADI here altimeter here with options we can choose there we've got our VSI vertical speed indicator here we've got our mark here or indicated speed there in kilometers an hour we've got our angle of attack there we've got our G meter there we're not moving at the moment but Radar altimeter there in meters. We've got true speed there, kilometers an hour, IAS or CAS, kilometers an hour there. Um, and we've got our barometric altitude there. Next screen, TSD. Uh, this is like a HSI, horizontal situation indicator. And uh, this is for navigation, Neo, yeah? Navigation as well. It's in more of an SA page, like in F-18. Oh, right. So, yeah, it will show you uh, threats as well, but not, it's not implemented for threats. Now, right now, you can uh, just uh, toggle between your waypoints. Right, I'm just using my incrementer up here on the UFC to go between waypoints, and it's showing me, yeah, where to go there. Fair enough. We can also uh, change our center position and have a whole bunch of other stuff, most of which isn't modeled yet in terms of the side um, options. Is that right, Neo? Yeah, it's not modeled. We tried to find... Uh, latest one we have found is how to uh, align the aircraft. So we are implementing that uh, for now. Roger. RWR, you all know what an RWR is. You can filter whether you want air, sea, SAMs, or EWR. MFWS, engine stuff, nozzle positions, tachometers of the engine, the temperatures of the engine, and we can also have fuel, we can also have landing gear situation systems, and the other stuff currently not modeled. MASD, probably our main one. We have several sub screens. SMS is our stores management screen. You can see we have that weapon, that weapon, and that weapon on this particular aircraft. DTL, data link. Um, bad example here, but if you imagine you were flying in an SU-33 flanker, it has a data link screen where you can see um, what your radar tells, shows you. You can also see where other players in the theater are with data link, AWACS feeding data back to you. That is what you would see if you were airborne and had it all turned on in the DTL. Also, targeting pods, uh, not relevant to this particular one we've got here because we're an air-to-air -air variant, but we could have TV, um, FLIR, which is going to be work pretty much the same as the TV, and our ELINT, and we'll show you all of that later. 
and they're all otherwise interchangeable. For data link, uh, you have to put it on your third MFD since that's the only one binded to the uh, SU33. Right. So if you select MSD on the third ah, MFD, uh -huh. add that link. There it is, right, gotcha, yep. Yeah. It's the same display from the flanker, presumably. Yes. Next, some more switches, landing lights, um, our jammer, condition, our radar ILL and EOV, let's just say, yeah. Uh, crew operation joint, is that uh, regards multi-crew, Neo? Uh, yes, yet to be modelled. We've got not modelled there, we've got brightness there, we've got not modelled, not modelled, not modelled there, stick, rudder trim shouldn't be modelled, this, look at this. One hef heifer of a great refueling probe. Stick that baby in. Uh, stuff behind there. A couple of things not modelled. We've got flight instruments here are modelled and are uh, can be trimmed and changed uh, as you would expect. Uh, what do we go next? A couple of things here not modelled, not modelled, not modelled there. A couple of indicators there. Not modelled there, not modelled there. Tacos there, modelled. Uh, otherwise, UFC, we've got COM, IFF, not relevant. Um, nav, change you to navigation mode, air to air, change you to air to air mode, air to ground, change you to air to ground mode, blank and blank. In, you got the waypoint incremented there. Is there any other functionality? So if you press on destination one, the f first switch, Check, the, yeah. Yeah, those will give you the coordinates that you have pointed your waypoints to. Roger. Most of the things are still work in progress, I'd say. Roger. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can also switch between the way waypoint type using the four-way switch on the left side of the screen. Ah, look at that. Yep. Very good. Okay, quickly blast uh, down this right-hand console. So, power switches for the systems. We saw that earlier. And we've got a bunch of stuff here. It's not modeled. We've got a bunch of stuff here. Navigation is... Some of it is RWR here. Volume. Audio volume. Otherwise, not modeled. This is interesting. And um, we've got dispenser system. So, if you wanted to choose a particular program for the dispenser system, well, let's say, I don't know, program 2. And I'm going to go to manual and dispense. It will dispense that program, whatever it is, 10 chaff or something like that. And let's go back to program one. Uh, dispense again. It's going to send some flares out. Anything else to add to the uh, countermeasure panel, Neo? Uh, yes, uh, we will add a few more programs in future before the release, probably. Okay. So it will have more manual and more mixed in controls. Yeah. Another panel down here, not model. Panel here is modeled, as we saw. Uh, we've got AC generators, inverters, battery, starter buttons, and is there anything else? And request external power. We've got lighting, internal and interior lighting. Turn on some lovely lights. This is, oh, nav lights, yep, nav lights. And uh, we've got our tester, as we saw earlier. Not model down here. Toilet, wow, what's the toilet switch meant to do? Uh, it's just as you think it is. Right, and that, Neo, I think, is our cockpit. <clears throat> I'll describe it as probably kind of 60% modeled all round, and the UFCs are pretty nice. Regards to the cockpit, Neo, is there anything you want to add at this point? Uh, yes, you can press zero to switch between the front and the rear cockpit, zero um, and nine. I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, well done. Uh, completely forgot there is another cockpit back here. Now, interestingly, Neo, and I didn't notice this before, but we've got four MFDs. What's that all about? Why is there four, four MFDs at the back? Uh, it's a weapon systems operator software. Right, uh, yeah. Nothing much is modeled on this part, yeah. this area. But uh, it's still there for functionality and for fun. Right, yeah, that's there. Looks very nice. Okay, let's go back. I'm pressing a zero to get back as well. Next, let's go and shoot some stuff down. Let's do some air to air. I'm picking the SM because it's just something different to show with the air to air configuration. We're just going to slap some lovely modern missiles onto it. Why don't we add a? Let's try an EA. It's an active version of Alamo. Let's add a R77 Adder dash one. Uh, try passive. Uh, seeker, see if we can get that firing, and why not an R77 mic long range? Uh, I think that's probably all we need to show. Why don't we put an archer on there as well, just in case? Okay, let's go and shoot some stuff down. So, first of all, knows we're steering on. Accelerate. Right, off we go. Uh, there's very little to show. It really is just like firing missiles from an SU-33. So, we're going to go. <laughs> of course, I chose the one with the Russian cockpit. Right, I'm going to guess that's air-to-air. -air. It's not. Of course it's not. That's There we go. Air-to-air. -air. And we're going to go BBR. We're going to go radar 
on. There we go. Right, we've got some baddies in front of us. We've currently got the combined cockpit on. Uh, sorry, the combined HUD on. That's fine. We'll stick with that. Just like an SG-33, find the target. Press target lock. And I'm going to choose a different weapon to get some more range. That's an Alamo. You see, it doesn't have much range on the DLZ there. So let's try a 77M. Has plenty of range. And don't forget, Master Arm, wherever it is. There it is. Ping. Fly by, fire the missile. There he goes. New sounds there as well, which are nice. It's the R77M that's going to let that splash down. I need some nice, easy targets today. Why don't we try firing one of these Alamos next? So, new target. Target found. What do we got? R77 change weapon. Got an EP there, an active. Let's see if we can get this to fire. Not got these to fire. This is a passively guided thing. Uh, in fact, we better not because it's an A10. It doesn't have a radar, so that won't work. Let's try an EA active Alamo missile away. So that's a Fox 3 variant of the Alamo, which is cool. Neo, did that ever go into production, the Fox 3 variant of the Alamo? Uh, no, it did not. I think the Soviet broke up before Roger. it was supposed to go to oh, production or anything. All right, let's just show ACM and ADA. So I'm going to press, uh, just like we would in a in a C-flanker. I'm going to press whatever ACM mode I like the look of. Helmet mounted sight in this case. I'm going to look for a target visually. I think there's one over here somewhere. There's one. Lock him. Target lock. Too far away. Target lock. Get in range. Launch authorized. Fire the missile. And just like a flanker. Ah, oh, he spoofed it. Look at that. Which shows that, of course, we get guns. Just like a flanker and the symbology the same as the flanker. So it's all super easy. Other than having pressing master arm and going to your air to air variant through the USC if you want. It's going to be similar to a flanker. Anything you want to add onto the air to air uh, operation Neo? No, I think uh, you had it all covered down. Next, air to ground. Why don't we go and show off the MKI here? Let's put some fancy weapons. Let's go for. Pop, pop, pop. We need pods on. So we're going to have our Damocles, <coughs> excuse me, targeting pod. We're going to have our um, Elint data collection. We're going to choose some weapons. What do we got? What's big and, and good? Arudra. I don't think I already pronounced that. It's our harm type um, anti radiation weapon. What else do you want to see? Um, would you want to see uh, small diameter bombs? Uh, let's have them. Why don't we drop something different? No, I know what we want. That funny big Russian thing that uh, kind of cruise missile type thing. That'll be fun for you, won't it? Uh, better put a Bramos on there. Stick a Bramos on there. Okay, in our heavily loaded MKI. As we're steering. Boom. Let's do it. Master arm on, please, uh, edge of ground on, check, get our mast on, target pod on, Elinton, ready to fight, looking for a SAM, can we find a SAM, there's one, right there, how convenient, an SA6, well, let's just move our TDC onto it, press target lock, launch authorized, follow our launch authorization, master arms on, and fire the mic one, get some, Oh, have some of that, baby. In conclusion, just like firing any CAD type weapon or DAD type weapon uh, from the SU 25T, let's watch it go boom boom. And that is one dead SA6. Boom. So, next, the Bramos. Now, this is going to be fired a bit differently. We're not going to use the Elint for this, actually. We're going to fire it uh, dead reckoned. So, select Bramos. Check. We need to find where the vessels are. In this case, they are uh, 328 for 12. Well, that's a little bit close, actually. Uh, but let's try it anyway. 328. Let's get ourselves on that heading there. We're going to press uh, launch permission override. That guy there. And we're just going to dump fire it into the horizon. And it should, if there is a ship roughly on that vector, pick that ship up. Attack it as an anti-ship weapon. Ah, 
Ah, got it. Look at that. Now that's a big warhead as well and very hard to stop. Boom. Didn't even fire back. Look. That's the whole ship destroyed. And look at the size of the hole in, in the middle there. Lovely. That is the new Bramos. Now let's go and use some more traditional weapons. Let's go and use our small diameter bomb, shall we? So turn that off there. Let's go TV. And this, this is going to be our Shkval from our SU-25T. It's going to work the same as our Shkval, which you can all use. We're going to go and find the targets, which are left over there somewhere. In fact, we're going to turn our thrust vectoring on because I want that extra bit of control. I have need for speed. Like a ballerina. <laughs> Pretty cool. Whoops. <laughs> I saw myself. I was showing off near and I had to turn it off. Okay. Fast vectoring off. And we're back in control. Right. I'm going to head away from this target. Just for a minute, so we can use our glide bombs, our small diameter bombs. Turn back in, get some altitude, get some speed. Probably just easier if I pause it actually, just to make it quicker. So, we are going to select our weapon, check. We're going to guide the TDC onto the target area, press target lock once to stabilize the, the Shkval to the target. Oh! That's interesting. Oh, I think I am looking at my own body. So why don't I unpause that? There we go. I was looking at my own body. Look at that. <laughs> now we can pause it. Uh, zoom in, shall we? Find a target. He looks nice and juicy, I'd say. Let's uh, unpause now. Now, Neo, should I be using launch position override for this or not, do you think? Go ahead. Use a launch override. Launch position override press. It's a normal thing to press for a flanker. And fire. Launch. Authorized. And let's see if we'll find another one. Get my own body in the plane, which is in the way. It's because I'm flying badly. As you probably noticed. Go right there. I go there. I go there. I hope that wasn't too close. Okay, there they go. Do you know the warhead side on these warhead size on these things, do you? Uh, about eighty kilometers. Uh, sorry, eighty kilograms. Yeah, it's not bad. Boom, boom, boom. Not bad. Three out of four. First one I literally just missed. I just aimed the crosshair badly, but it's pretty cool. Right, uh, why don't we go try another weapon? Um, let's try something. Uh, the massive uh, 59 MK. Just go head away again. Okay, so crosshair on target roughly. Ground stabilized. Check. Zoom in. Check. Try and ascertain ourselves a little target. Okay. Try launch permission override fire. Look at that sucker go. It's not gonna attack, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah look at that. There you go. Bent down at the last minute. Boom. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Look at that for a warhead. And so on and so forth. I don't think there's much more to show this kind of different or special. Anything else on the air to ground weapons, Neo? Uh, no, I think you have it covered. Welcome back. Uh, we decided to skip air to air. It turns out it was exactly the same as the SU-33 and there's not really any point of wasting your time showing it, but it's, it works, it's fine. Multiplayer multi-crew we need to try out now. We have set the MKM variant, if you remember, the Malaysian variant to be non-FC3, so it should be multi-crew compliant. Uh, Simba, why don't you try being the pilot of the MKM? And tell me when you're ready for me to join. All right, I'm in and ready. Requesting. Coming in. All right, let's see what this does. Ah, oh, crashed. Dang it. Have you got any, have you got it to work at all, Neo? It's work in progress, first of all, but I think you had, uh, is SU-33 or is uh, FC-3 to set true? Is it? I've got... In config? I've got FC-3 set to false for the MKM, so it should have worked. Have you got your MKM set to set to false for the FC3 Simba? Yes. No, so it should have worked, shouldn't it? It's better if you skip that part itself. Uh, this version was not uh, supposed to be multi crew at all. Roger. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got. We've got a bunch of air to air weapons that are firing. We've got a bunch of air to ground weapons that are firing. We've got cockpits fore and aft. 
We've got a startup procedure. We've got the controls that we've gone over. Air to air refueling. Don't really need to show multi. So multi crew not working at the moment really, or you know a bit buggy. So we'll come back to that on a later version. EFM again a bit buggy as well. Come back that back to that on a later version. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty fun. It's pretty decent for a you know first release. Anything you boys think we've missed or you want to add at this point? Uh, no, I just want to do a compliment Neo and his team on a, a lot of hard work they've been doing for quite a while. I know the viewers have been putting in our uh, video streams. They've been wanting to see us do more SU30. And we've been telling you guys, hey, man, the code, the code flanker team has been working really hard. They've got something in the works for us. And this is a, uh, a great update from that first version of the SU-30 that we were all flying uh, before. Uh, I'm really impressed with how far they've come along, and I know they have a lot still to do in the future, and I really look forward to what these guys can come up with. So this version of the mod was mostly focused on updating our 3D from our previous alpha version. So we actually we learned how to do 3D for this project itself, for this 3 SU-30 mod. Mm -hmm. So we learned 3D, we learned texturing, everything from scratch. So this version is mostly focused on that. You may find some bugs. You may find some a lot of things to complain about. But yeah, we'll try to get there soon, one by one. Roger, we'll come back in a few versions of time and we'll check out the uh, the other options when they're ready. Thank you, Neo. Thank you, Simba, for getting us sorted. And we'll see you guys later.